Now when I say we're going to create a toy, what we're really doing is creating a module. We just call them toys in our repository because we made a sandbox and every sandbox should have toys in it. What I'm actually doing is going into the modules folder and you can see all the modules which are labeled as toys but inside here you should see toy assets and sandbox and these are just modules. So is pyramid toy and chain toy. These are all modules but we just labeled these as toys just to you know, explain what they should be doing. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it Mitch Toy since most everyone calls me Mitch. And inside of here I'm going to create another folder and give it the name 1. Now the reason we do this is because every module can have multiple versions. I can have a version 1, version 2, version 3, and I can actually specify what I want, ver what versions I want to load up. And this is useful for when you're trying to constantly update a module and you might always have it as version 1, but when you do a big release, this is even useful for your game, you might release an old module and a new module so that if there's a problem someone can delete the new one and just go back to the old one. This toy just has the version 1 because it's the first time we're making it, so I'm just going to leave it at that and go into the next one. And a module, mostly all it needs is a module definition file. And then after that, you can structure this however you want. You can have a main.cs, you can have an entry.cs, uh, you can create new folders and lay out your assets any way you want. But what I want to start with is just creating a module definition. And what I have is I've already copied and pasted an empty module file, and it's just a TAML. So if I open this up, you'll see there's nothing in it. And a TAML is a Torque application markup language. It's essentially XML. So when you're editing it, you want to edit in such a way that you're creating fields as you would with a XAML or XML file. This defines the main part of my toy. What is it exactly? And it always starts with a module definition. So there I have it. There's my base uh, base field. And inside here, I already have the uh, fields memorized, and I also have them on the screen so I don't mess up. But the first field is the module ID. And this is the name of my module, or in this case, I'm just going to refer to this as my toy name. And then I'm going to give it version 1. So as I said earlier, you want to have multiple versions. So if you create a second version, it's going to have its own module file, and you would specify that as 1. And for the sake of clarity, I'm just going to say, you know, this is a, a readable description. It'll show up as a tooltip in our sandbox. So the dependencies, this says that when my module, when the Mitch Toy module loads up, it's going to look for these dependencies that also need to be loaded. And in this case, we have a shared module of assets that a lot of different toys can use, and I want to load the version 1 of this. So right now, that's the only dependency I have. That way I have access to extra uh, assets so I don't have to create new ones. And this is just for sandbox. You would not need this for a, a clean, fresh game. This is just of type toys. So my sandbox knows what to do with it. And inside of our sandbox, we have toy categories so that uh, when you're cycling through them, you can actually filter your toys based on uh, feature, fun, development, and miscellaneous. And toy category 5 means this is a fun toy. So it'll show up with the truck toy and the death ball toy and aquarium. So when this module loads, it's going to look at the script file field and say, is there a script I should execute? Now I haven't created it yet, but I'm going to be creating a main.cs, and that's a torch script file, and I'll have it do certain things. So for now, I'll just, this will tell the module database to execute this script file and load. Now these two entries I added in, when the script file main.cs is executed, it will have two functions to start with. It'll be a uh, create function and destroy function so that when this module is loaded, the create function and its contents will be uh, evaluated. And when the module is shut down, the contents of the destroy function will be evaluated. And I'll show you how to set those up as well because there's more to it than just writing out these words. And now this next part is optional. 
if you want to have assets specific to this module, so for instance, if I had a uh, assets just dedicated to Mitch Toy, unique, doesn't go to anything else, then I would want to have declared assets. Uh, it's not really necessary in my one example because I'm going to be pulling an asset from another location, but just for the sake of it, you know, you never know. I'm going to create a new entry. And I'll just type this all out and explain it in just a second. Okay, so here's what I've done here. I've added a new field. Let me line these up. All right, I've added in uh, declared assets. And this particular uh, entry inside of the module definition will say, go to the subfolder assets, look for any files that have the extension of asset.taml, and these will be assets that this toy uses. And recurse means that if I have multiple subfolders inside of here, it'll go through every subfolder looking for that file type and load them or register them for the asset manager, the asset database, and say, this is what you need to look for. And that's the creation of my module folder. So the next part is I'm going to create some folders and some scripts and then show you how to get the, uh, the new toy, the Mitch toy, showing up in the sandbox.